Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I'm out in California checking out the best and brightest that San Francisco has to offer. And I will say one thing. The East Coast EV scene is lame compared to the West Coast, and I'm trying to fix that. But I mean it's like really lame. Embarrassing even. Almost as embarrassing as someone walking around with a wallet like this. Yes, we all know that one guy with that massive wallet that walks around like they have something to prove. Stop doing this and get a nice, sleek, slim wallet from Ridge Wallet. It has a money clip option, which I didn't go with because I have no money. And it holds your credit cards. I got the burnt titanium color because it matches my matte Nardo gray Tesla in the background. Check out Ridge Wallet at RidgeWallet.com rich and use promo code rich for 10% off and free worldwide shipping. And if someone asked if I really painted my Tesla in primer, I'm going to cry every time. So I got to San Francisco to check out my friend Phil. Now I've known Phil for years now and while I know the Tesla hardware very well, he's giving me a more in-depth knowledge of the software and how all the various components talk to each other. Even though I know my way around a Tesla, there's still a lot to learn and I'm learning more and more every day. Nope, this isn't even my final form. Today I met up with Phil at his shop and as a person that knows Tesla software like the back of his hand, he brings up some very good points about some issues that he sees with Tesla in relation to its code, the ability to fix the cars, and also how it relates to insurance. Let's talk to Phil and see what he has to say. Uh oh, look, it's Phil hard at work. How's it going, hey, Phil? Rich. How you doing, buddy? How good you day, been? Yeah. Well, uh, this is where I do, you know, I support a lot of Teslas all over the world that Tesla won't support. Right. Right now, Tesla's, you know, working hard to increase security to keep people out of the cars so yes. only they can get oh. into it. Yep. So uh, basically, no matter what they do with the security, you can't really keep someone out once you have physical access. Right, and you have physical access right yeah, here. Yeah, so you know, this is an MC1, which is found in Model S and X up to 2018, basically. Right. And it uses a uh, NVIDIA Tegra 3 as its brain. Mm -hmm. It's on this little module. Yeah. have a whole box of bad ones here. When someone gets a salvage car that Tesla won't support and we right. need to get diagnostics, they pull this module out, send it to me, put it on the bench. We have physical access now. We add diagnostic access, which can be done remotely. Send it back to them, they install it in the car, and then when they get the car, we can pull full diagnostics. We can reflash the car mm -hmm. if the module's been replaced. Basically do everything a Tesla can do. And then what do we have here? Is this the 2.0 version? Yeah, so in 2018, they switched the Model S and X to an Intel Atom-based processor, which is newer and faster. But otherwise, it's, it's basically the same design. This goes in the same frame. The display looks the same. As an end user, you can't tell the difference. Over here, we have the Model 3. They call this the ICE, which is the... Uh, I guess integrated car computer or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this contains, I can show you. And now there's two AP modules smushed on top of each other in this box, right? Yeah, well there's, so there, we've got this board here, which is basically the MCU. Yep. So it's the same as those boards. Okay. It has the same Intel Atom that we- That's one over here? Yeah, we saw in uh, Info 2. Right. MCU 2. And then under, we have this thing, which is a cold plate. And they run the... Oh, it's liquid cooled. Yeah, it's liquid okay. cooled. They run the glycol that's cooling all the powertrain mm -hmm. and the battery through here to cool this. This thing's mounted right on the firewall yep. um, right here and the coolant lines go out so that, you know, if you had a... The likelihood of you having a leak and it flooding your car is low. Okay. This is the autopilot brain. It's called APE uh, in Tesla nomenclature and has the primary and secondary and then the MCU part. And that whole thing is mounted on the firewall behind the glove box. Mm -hmm. And that's the most of the brains in the car. But if you want to see, as I've posted in some of my videos. Now this is kind of crazy. We've got the entire Model 3 operable laid out in this Sprinter van. So you're going to convert this Sprinter van to run on Model 3 components effectively, right? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh, everything here works. And this was a, a test book, which allowed me to learn. See right here, you can see is the same uh, ice that we uh, just looked at yeah right autopilot and you can see the glycol lines mm -hmm. running and that noise you hear is the pumps cooling that I've, I've got a little tiny radiator sitting right here oh, between the seats <laughs> oh that's, that's funny that's my radiator because I'm not really driving the car right 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 cool electronics like when I'm charging or whatever 
but the whole car is in here. The steering rack, headlights, mm -hmm. uh, windshield wipers, radar. Yeah, everything. Oh, and the pack's right here, right? Yeah. In case, in case yeah. you haven't seen it, guys, yeah. the pack's literally right here. So the pack in the car as that's well. That's temporary. Once the sprinter, the drive unit's mounted underneath and it's driving, right. the pack will be mounted underneath. There's like a ton of room under there. When you take out drive shaft, exhaust, fuel tank, there's all that stuff you know, that makes an internal combustion engine work won't be there. Right. So Wait, are you recording me recording him? Fucking caught me, man. <laughs> <laughs> This Sprinter was a theft recovery, so the thieves have already stripped the dashboard off. That's so I don't have the option to continue with the Sprinter inside, so I'm just gonna put the entire Model 3 in there. It's gonna be awesome, man. Yeah, it, everything. I'm gonna try to get the autopilot to work and, and everything. Oh, wow. So there's some miscellaneous parts, but that's the drive unit, um, and it's connected if, uh, if you power up the car and get in, shift it into drive, it'll so it spin. spinning. Okay. Um, and then uh, basically the the live axle that's normally under there is going to be modified to accept that unit, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll drive hopefully. Do you believe that the Model Three drive unit is going to be powerful enough to push the Sprinter fully loaded with stuff in it? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. It'll it'll be a little less efficient. Obviously, it'll be yeah. generating more heat. But uh, think of. Uh, when you get in a Model 3 full of, with four, four or five people in it, it drives and stuff in the trunk and you go up a hill. Right. You know, and you're flooring it. Right. You're, you're putting the same kind of loads on it mm -hmm. as you would. It's just the sprinter is not going to go up the hill as fast if right. it's loaded. Based on the experience people have on the track when they're really working a Model 3 hard, yep. that the thermals will allow it. I'm obviously going to... I'm going to keep the original Sprinter radiator, which is much larger than a Model than 3 Than a little radiator. baby Model 3 or it's yeah. like this big, right. So I don't think I'll have any problems. Worst case scenario is mm -hmm. you're going up a hill and you're using a lot of power. The drive unit overheats and it will reduce power to protect itself. Right. Just like it does on a track when you hammer it. So why didn't you decide to use a, uh, a Model S? rear drive unit instead? Well, the Model S drive unit is uh, less efficient mm -hmm. and it, anyone will tell you if you take that on a track, you get a lap out of it and it, it overheats. Right. So uh, it just wasn't designed as well. It doesn't have as good of integrated cooling. Like you see th that uh, rectangular thing that looks like a bunch of stacks. Yep. That's a heat exchanger that takes glycol in from the uh, cooling system mm -hmm. and cools the oil that's being circulated and there's an electric pump circulating that oil throughout the motor and the transmission, like the gear reduction part of it. And that's the little filter on the bottom too. So Model S doesn't have that. It has a gear driven pump that can only circulate uh, oil in the, in the drive line uh, as fast as the wheels are turning. This can ramp up the speed to a much higher circulation rate and transform more heat out of that oil and into the glycol to keep it cooler. Okay. So that's why I believe this is a superior drive unit, even with the extra load. And the Model 3 prices are coming down too. Yeah, you can get one salvaged cheap enough. Um, you know, obviously I don't have to do as much integration work. Like I don't have to build a custom controller to make the drive unit run without the battery because I'm effectively putting the whole car in. Mm -hmm. There will be some things that have to be changed, uh, but it won't be much, but it is possible. Um, if you wanted to run a Tesla drive unit without the other stuff, right. you can do that. The one thing that hasn't been figured out is the cryptographic handshake. But if you if you take the drive unit and uh, what Tesla calls VCSEC, the security controller, mm -hmm. those are cryptographically married. So as long as you have those together, you can run the drive unit out of the car with an external oh, controller. Okay. Well, uh, so, so what are the odds of you having this many broken chips and why do you have so many of those? Well, Tesla's got a problem on these things. There's a chip here, it's called an EMMC, and it's basically a solid state drive, like a flash drive, or uh, like in your Android phone, you'd find the same thing. And they create so many logs in the car that they write to this so fast that it basically burns it out. Because these EMMC chips have a finite amount of writes. They can only do so many writes, and as long as you when you design a system, you treat that properly. You're only doing writes, like anytime someone changes a setting on the screen or whatever, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But the amount of logging they're doing is excessive. Uh, and it's not the car logs, because like when you call Tesla service and you say, hey, my drive unit's acting up or whatever, they pull the logs from, there's a, 
SD card on here. Uh, where is it? Right here. There you go. Yeah, and that um, is a removable. So uh, the gateway logs are written here. And in the event they do, this does go bad from too much writing, you can just pop a new one in. And plus, this doesn't affect, even if this card isn't there, your car still operates. You still have a screen, it still drives everything. But when this burns out, you wake up to a black screen. That's dead. Yeah. You can't, nothing here. You can't turn on your climate control. You can generally drive the car in limp home mode, but it won't charge, things like that. So this is happening right now at about the four year mark. It, it, it's not time based mm -hmm. because it really depends on how long this has been awake. Right. So if you've been doing a lot of driving in city traffic and this has been awake a lot, mm -hmm. it's going to have more wear and it's gonna die faster. And Tesla's not covering this once it's out of warranty, even though they're the cause of the damage. We're having to rebuild these in the aftermarket because Tesla won't sell any of these parts. And if you do go into Tesla, the only thing they'll do is replace the whole thing. And, and they'll charge you arm and leg, 2,500 well, yeah, to five grand, I think. The cheapest I think I've heard is around 22. Yep. And I've heard it quoted up to $5,000. Yeah, I don't understand why that is, but you know, if you look on the forums, you, you know, don't take it from my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Look on the forums and there's tons of threads about it. So Now, I, did they get any smarter with the uh, with a 2.5 version? Uh, well, they've got a much newer, higher capacity. Uh, this is the, the one here mm -hmm. and on the Model 3, we got basically the same architecture. It's so right they here. solved the problem by adding additional storage. They didn't really solve the root issue. Correct, they're still doing lots and lots of logging. Um, let me see if I can... Uh, why don't you just shut logging off if it's not necessary? I do. Oh. So anytime someone sends me one of these and we uh, access the car remotely, I turn off, I don't turn off the car logging, I just turn off the Linux subsystem logging. Let's see, yeah. okay, if you just watch this. So every time you see a line here, this is like the Linux subsystem logging and it's hitting that EMMC chip and just generating. So sometimes like this, this is a, MCU that's out of the cars. The rest of the car isn't even here. And it's, it's taking not that many on. Lines. It's not driving. And you can still like it's if you try to read this, it's hard yeah. to keep up with. So imagine if it was in a car and actually driving. Yeah, that would when be you, insane. When you start doing things on the screen, yeah. this thing just goes crazy. Ah, I see. So it, it generates more logs. And this is not needed for any diagnostic access. Like a technician's never gonna look at this. Right. It would only be useful for a developer. There's a lot of ways Tesla could do this. They could log it to RAM disk. They could log it to a removable security element mm -hmm. or like a SD card or something. But they, uh, they didn't choose to do that and uh, they're hammering it and it's killing the units. So yes, uh, Info2 in 2018 SNX will eventually have this happen. I don't know when. They have really good software developers, but you, out, you have to be a hardware guy to understand that you can't treat this like a hard drive on a desktop computer. Right. You've got to treat it like a smartphone. iPhones and Android log, but they don't log like this. And therefore, when an iPhone is obsolete, the EMMC in it is still good. So that's not the case in the, in the Tesla MCU. And why do you have this uh, Model 3 uh, screen in service mode? So basically the same thing happens when, when someone wants to work on a Model 3 and they want diagnostics, yeah. they send me the ice out of the car, we add remote access and remote diagnostics, send it back to them, they put right. it in the car, yep. they can then pull up a web page, yep. full diagnostics. Is that your, just your test display screen? Yeah, so when, I'm, when a, cu a customer unit comes in, I have to make sure everything's working right and gotcha. I send it back. Do you feel that the customer service requests for Model 3s are ramping up? Or do you think more people are still interested in the S's in terms of like well, gaining access? Well, you know, system? the Model 3s are just becoming available on the secondary market. You know, I've got probably about 20 customers, 20 Model From 3. Model 3 customers? Yeah. Okay. Whereas I've got like about 600 S and X customers. So right. um, there's not that much call for it yet, but obviously they're cranking them out. So there will, they will be wrecked mm -hmm. and people will need to buy them. Uh, or otherwise the, the cars will become uninsurable. Is the methodology so, the same to gain access to a Model 3 versus no, an S? No. All right, more difficult? Be, Are they getting yeah, more? Tesla spends a lot of time on security and I understand why they do it, but they should open up diagnostics. Yeah, um, I agree. They don't have to let us into the autopilot. I'm not asking for that. We just need diagnostics. We need the ability to replace our own modules. Yep. You know, it's, it's important to do that because these cars are unserviceable without that. Right, yeah. and Tesla's the only game in town. Yeah. So once they pump out 5,000 cars a week, 20,000 cars a month, and they only have two service centers in a state, it gets yeah. pretty well, congested. Well, not only that, but up until uh, September of 2018, 
they wouldn't talk to you as anyone yeah. in the senior videos. Right. If you have a salvaged car, sorry, you're dead to them. Right. So they've changed that policy. Now they will sell you parts. Sort of. I mean, it's at the place's yeah, discretion in case they didn't get the, some places didn't get the memo still. Yeah, apparently. And it's at, they, they're very adversarial. They, they don't want the cars back on the road. It's very clear. Yeah. Um, but yeah. they, they can't, they can't operate that way because the secondary market is really important. Uh, it, when you when you have an accident and your insurance company totals your car, that goes to an auto auction, and then someone like you buys it. Yep, that's and right. The insurance company gets that and money. And you, back. you get you yeah, buy them too. We, we buy them, <laughs> right? And the insurance company gets a chunk of their nut back, right? And that means they don't have to eat the whole car. But if people can't service the cars in the secondary market, the rates drop, then no one buys the cars and the insurance company can't insure them anymore or exactly yeah. they become exotic so ins insurance goes up yep which is what tesla's that's already happened. seeing it's already yeah. an issue so tesla's answer to that but, rather than but they're fixing it they're bringing uh, insurance in house yeah, they'll insure it themselves and that that's great if it works but they if they just don't have secondary value on the cars they're going to have the same problem All you right. know maybe they'll come up with a something to do with the parts i don't know well thank you phil i appreciate You're welcome. that man well, guys, I hope you enjoyed talking to Phil. Make sure to check out his YouTube channel in the link in the description below. He's a DIY guy. I'm a DIY guy. And speaking of DIY, do you like the Model 3? Well, let's get into the car of the week. There's a Flood Performance Model 3 up for auction today at IAA. It's at 21.5 right now with under 4,000 miles, and these cars go for triple that price. As you can see on the screen, it's still getting updates. It's listed as run and drive, so there's little to no work that needs to be done to it. You have a little dent in the door, so the car isn't perfect. But are you perfect? No. So just bid by, shake the car out a few times to see if any water comes out and drive the thing. Just make sure that there are no high voltage errors. Go to IAA, follow that stock number, and when you're ready to buy, use my code below for $50 off buyer registration. Good luck, and I will see you guys soon.